Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom. And today I usually look over, unless I already have like a title picked out, or I look to see what I'm about to preach to you. Um, and that's how I try to pick a title, or sometimes God just gives me a title. So today I looked. And then it says to God select. Um, and we're in 1 Peter 1. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of Ponset, Galatea, and Capisonia, Asia, and Benthia. And this is to the churches? Two, three, four, five. Wait, hold on. It's to the elect, sorry. <laughs> and to the foreknowledge of God and the Father through the sanctifying of the work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ, to the sprinkle with his blood and grace, peace. And grace and peace be with your abundance. Praise to God in the living of hope. Three. Praise to be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, that he has given us new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. You know, and... If you think about it, you know, when you read Deuteronomy, I still don't know off the top of my head, um, but when you read Deuteronomy, um, if you hear it and he says, he will open the windows of heaven and pour down the blessings that you cannot be able to contain, right? So let me explain what that means as well. In Deuteronomy means 28 or 12. All right. So people are thinking, because I used to think that, you know, that we're just, boom, you know, we're going to go and claim the money and that's it. You know, no, in due season, he said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour down the blessings. He will use kings and it's in the Bible. He will use kings in this world to come and bless you and there will be blessing upon blessings. And then anything I touch is going to turn to gold because I'm highly favored. You know, so everything is going to multiply, double up, double up, double up. That's what the imperative is. You pray, he answers. Everything that we've been praying along the road, you might have thought it was not being answered. The witches and warlocks, the sorceries, the bad auras that were out there um, were thinking that that was working, you know, and they rejoice about it. They laughed about it out there, but it was whatever. And I'm just sharing that with you because even though they thought in the natural, right, in the natural, it looks like they were winning, right? But we serve a supernatural God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And they were so focused right here that my God is doing it. Our Father was doing it all along, building things for us and along the way. What does he ask for? Seek the things of the kingdom of heaven first on earth, and everything else will be added to you. Where your heart is, as your treasure is. Does that mean... um that if he blesses us, we're going to get this money, you know, as we're going along because he's providing. And for those that are getting blessed, you know, it's a blessing is to bless forward. That's how you multiply. That's how you double up in their, in their, in their talents. Like when it says, I gave you this much talent, you know, if you go bless and feed the poor, if you go always rebuke, if you always go to the churches and do your 10%, the one that you go to, he sees that. But that you do it from your heart, that you're not doing it here and expecting God, all right, well, where's my blessing? Because then he knows the intentions of your heart. He knows that. He knows that you're doing it just to get money. That's never going to happen. However, if you play, you know, if you pray, sorry, you got to remember, too, that he's not a genie. It's not about money. You know, so you also need to get that out of your head. You know, we're talking about in this journey, spiritual gifts, discernment, because we were spiritual blind. So that's what he's saying is how you could heal yourself. Read the Bible and on the way, you know, for he is blessing people because they're supposed to be destiny's helper. The blessing is for them to do it and then they multiply for doing it. That's how he gets the talents. They multiply. If not, he takes away if you didn't do what he had asked you to do. That's how Saul lost his place because he was doing it his way. You know, he wasn't doing it God's way, you know, and you see it repeatedly in, in there. And it tells you, this is just kind of to help you, you know, understand how our beautiful father works, you know, and it says in due season, in due season, I will bring it to pass. 
you know, and I know if anything, we all want something now, you know, but we're kept alive. We're in good health. He's protecting our family. You got to look at the what's more important. What is it that you're really fighting for? What is it that is your drive? You know, what is it that you really want secure that nobody hurts it, that nobody touches it? You know, because everything else he does is your family. You know, it's maintaining you until he gets here. Be content with what you have until he gets here. And that's what the Bible says. And then he opens the windows of heaven, pour down the blessings, and then you multiply and you go forward. Churches, you know, pray over people. You know, that's just constantly the Bible speaks to you over and over again how to come into it and how to grow from it. Is bless him that blesses you, curse him that curses you. You're cursing yourself if you don't do what he's saying. He blesses you when you bless forward. And now it says, who through faith are shilling by God's power, but until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed. But in the last time in all this is greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These are, this comes so that he is proven genuine, if, he, if, he, if you're really going to be genuine, of your faith of greater worth than gold. Do you get it? You know, if you're looking for that, you know, come up like that, you know, and then he knows that you're just doing it for the drive of money. You know, he, what does he want more than anything? He's saving this world. He's saving his children and he's saving the, the world, you know, the humans. <laughs> The, you know, and it's hard because the way it says it on here, there's humans that are humans. And then you get the other ones that I don't know why they call humans because they're actually elements. They're, there's a demonic world, which is in warlocks. That's what they are. They're elements. They're terrestrial beings. That's what it means. You know, we are considered celestial beings that we're God, heavenly angels to do good. And the works they speak. If I'm sitting here preaching you the word deliverance, liberty, uh, staying away from sins and staying with it and maybe correcting you, you know, correction makes perfection, you know, and sometimes we have to get it wrong to get it right, you know, but the important thing is to go into remission of sin and learn from it. Not means come do and doing it and say, Hey, I'm going to get a free out of jail. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, sin is sin, you know, first, if you didn't know, but now, you know, there's a difference, you know, you're making that choice. You know, um, it's just staying consistent, you know, with what you're doing. You know, if it's work, then still go to work, but don't do the things of the world. Stay away from it. Come home to your family. Pray over your family because that's very important. Prayer is everything, you know, um, and you all know that we're at the end times. And some people might say, oh, well, we don't know exactly when, but, you know, you don't know. You know, you don't know. So why would you want to chance it in thinking maybe... Just maybe I could do this just one more time. Just maybe. What did that maybe was the last time? You know, it's, you, you just got to know, you know, your discernment, what's good and what's bad. Um, what's the will of God and your will or your fleshly will, you know, is what you feel like doing. Hey, you know, there's God or there's the pathway to hell. You know, and when I have said it repeatedly, because I think I heard some couple on TV, you know, how I was saying it's either red pathway to hell is red or blue heaven. You know, the ways of God, the covet with our father, not that you're teaming up with me because this is about my father again. And this is about you. And I heard a couple say, well, we're going red. Well, then it just meant basically you're, you're, you're choosing to go the ways of the world. Well, then God bless you. That's all I could say. You know, this is not about a game. This is not about a love story. This is not about anything. This is about real angels and demon fighting against each other. Understand that. And if you don't want to listen to the messenger, just know that my hands are clean because I did what my father had asked me to do. And that's why I'm still going and I'm going to keep going, you know, and continue showing up, continue serving him for my father and then for you and my children. And my marriage and my calling, you know, everything that he had asked me and destined to do, you know. So these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of is greater worth than gold. 
which is perish, even though you refine by fire, may result in praise and glory, honor when Jesus Christ is revealed that thou hast not seen him, that you love him even though you do not see him, but now you believe in him and you are filled with an expressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end of the result of your faith, salvation of your souls, salvation of your souls, heaven or hell was fire, burning, flaming fire. That's where it's going to end, and that's in Revelation. The new heaven, the new earth, hello, the new Garden of Eden being restored. It's that easy. It's a fight for your soul. This is to let you know that there is a fight out there with demons and angels, God angels, that are so much want your soul. And this is just to tell you how to free yourself. You know, concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke grace, that was to come to you, search intently, but with a greater care trying to find out the time and the circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ, and in them pointing when he had predicted the suffering of the Messiah and the glories that would follow, that he revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but to you. But they spoke of the things that they have now been told by you and who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even the angels long to look into these things. Be holy. Now I'm on 1 Peter 1 13. I said Peter. <laughs> I hit that from um, Hunger Games. She's out Peter. You know, so now I'm in 1 Peter 1 13. Be holy. Therefore, with minds that are alert, fully sober, Set your hope and grace and be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed of his coming. As an obedient children, do not confirm the evil desires that you have and that you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, is to be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. But since you are called of our Father who judges each person, work impartially. Live out your time as a foreigner that here is is reverent fear. You know, real quick, um, you know, I always look to see and I go to support the videos and, and like when I see new faces and when I see new faces and even some that have gone and then come back. Um, I just want to say welcome, welcome, you know, continue on the journey, you know, and even it's to, um, you know, a lot of people think, oh my God, I'm going to have to be called into ministry. You know, this is to get to know the Bible, to get to know the real history, to get to know our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the one that really created everything. You know, and I, one of the girls, um, I think it's her name is Samantha Valencia. Um, she talks about her soberness, you know, and you see, you see her light, you know, you see that, you know, when you're sober minded, you know, sober, you know, like she said, from drugs, you know, you see the change in someone. And as you continue growing and knowing the Bible, you know, it washes you and it cleanses you from the sin. You don't think God notices that he does, you know, and the reward is with him for just doing the will of God and not the will of man, of the world, of what the world wants to you to lose your soul. You know, this is things that I know, and I think I see Miss Stephanie kind of saying, you know, I think I heard a little bit, not the whole video, about her saying that, you know, physically she feels, you know, like tired. And we do, you know, but we always have to pray. Stay on prayer and ask God to give you the strength, you know. So I always pray every day over everybody, you know. Just remember that, you know, like never think that that's it and you know, there's not an answer. And I'm not saying that she thought that. I'm just saying, you know, that you hear brothers and sisters saying that. And we're going to feel that way. There's times that I feel that way. You know, and I'll be like, God, <laughs> I always wake up and I pray. Even it's in the middle of the night if I have to use the bathroom. I'll be like, all right, pa, Father, I go recharge me, Father. <laughs> Father, recharge me. And then like that, just like that. You ask, you believe, boom. You know, if you question it, well, I think you can, you know. He knows that my faith has totally pivoted, has totally changed, totally, totally. You know, like before, like, you know, if a situation came up that, you know, remember I told you in the trials and tribulations, I said, you have to leave, you have to get out, you know, and it's kind of like, dang, you know, what am I going to do? You know, but I learned that you stay still in the storm. You know, that means you're staying faith. But if he's telling you pack up your bags, it's getting time to go. That means 
pack it up. You pack it up with faith that you know it's going to happen. You know, you show up, you know, and you got to remember, you know, even if you feel like the time, say God said, go buy a car and you go and you think how, you know, say you show up and it doesn't happen. I did it. You know, I did it with faith, you know, and, and they, you know, there was some trials and tribulations behind it. But you know what? At the end of the day, I showed up for my father. I showed up to go try to precious houses. You know, everything that I did, I did it in faith for him. And that was just the beginning of the journey. You know what I'm saying? At the beginning of the journey. But I knew all along the way I was being blessed because I was born to be blessed. You know, we were born to be blessed as the Lex, as chosen vessels, that you were chosen, you know, and you're highly favored. You know, you're blessed and you're highly favored, you know. But what does he want? He wanted first the awakening of his son, Jesus, that died on that cross for us. He wanted that awakening. He needed to prepare us. Imagine if he would have gave us all everything at the beginning, we would have got comfortable. We would have been like, that's it. And then we still would have been functioning of the things of the world and running this world. He, he wasn't going to let that happen, you know. And that's why I just read to you that it said there's an appointed time for the inheritance, you know, and our ways are not his ways. And um, our thoughts are not his thoughts, you know, and it so has renewed my mind and how much faith um, I've rooted on and how much faith has grown stronger, you know, because I believe in him because he is so real. He's given me the victory over and over again. Um, now it says for you to know that it was not with the perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you, but from your ancestors, your ancestors, you know what I'm saying? Remember a lot of them perished for the cost for you. They took that burden. They took that death. They took that cross. Okay. On top of there, we had ancestors that perished because they decided to follow the things of the world. Four generations, I think maybe 14, but I'm talking about the, the generations for it, I believe. I think it's 14 maybe. But four generations means in centuries that has perished over and over and over, and it has been the offset. And he's saying no more. You know, that we're coming to the end times, that he's healing this land, that he's doing restoration, redemption to this world. And to do that is bringing his children again that he keeps sending out to you to tell you and the world redeem because they had plans to do it much worse. He's saying it is not your saying. The only people that are going to feel that is the one that decide to still follow the evil ways, the way of the world, you know. For you to know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you will be redeemed for the empty way and that life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with your precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. For he was chosen before the creation of the world, that he was revealed in the last time for your sake. But through him that you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, so that faith and hope in God... Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you may be sincere love with each other's love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again, not a parable, you know, perishable seed, you will be able to perish seed, but imperishable like that's it. You know, it's a good seed <laughs> through the living and enduring the word of God for all people that are like grass. It says, and all their glory is like flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever, forever. You know, pass that on to your children. You know, teach him God's way. You know, teach him the Ten Commandments. You know, people think, oh, my God, it's over. No, it's not. You know, the only difference that is going to be in this world is, is removing the darkness. <laughs> it's still going to be the same. You know, there's still going to be gun rights. You know, there's still going to be religions, freedom of speech. That's not going to be taken from you. They might look like they think they are. Anything that they're sitting there calling, they could say what they want. We all know difference. The Father's put in his children on the throne. And everything's going to pivot for the good. He's going to do it like that. So right now, they could say this and that. But God said, 
the Bible says, remember, and it says it on there. You know, it's going to be the governor and the government's going to be at the right hand of the shoulder, you know, because God said, <laughs> and this is the word that will be preached to you. 1 Peter 2, therefore rid yourself from all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander, every kind like newborn babies, right? They crave pure spiritual milk. So by it, they may grow in your salvation. And now that you have tasted the Lord and it is good, the living shall, it says the living stone and a chosen people. I it says, are you to come to him, the living stone rejected by human and chosen by God, precious to him? You also are the living stones that are being built in spiritual houses to the holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For him in scriptures, it says, see that I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The cornerstone, it says, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe in the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone is the builder's rejected. The stone is the one that the builder's rejected, has become the cornerstone, the head. It's the head, the head. And the stone that causes people to stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they are disobey the message, which is also that they had disdain for. It says, for you are chosen people of royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. It says, that you may declare in praise of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not the people, but now you are the people of God. Once you were not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Living godly lives, it says living godly lives in a pagan world. We're in the world, but not of the world. Now, even the Gentiles that are in the world, you still don't have to live like the pagan world. I repeatedly have showed you on here how they have twisted everything in and turn it to be from the Bible, what the Bible says, opposed to what they said, like Salem. They call it Salem a witch hunt. You know, it was God. It's in the Bible. And you see Salem. Salem means peace, you know, but that's not the way they wanted you to see it. And you don't know it. You don't know the Bible. So you think, oh, well, you know, God, it does say Salem. You know, you go into witchcraft. You know, you don't. That's evil. That's contacting the dead. That's contacting evil, evil elements. I got dear friends i urge you as a foreigner exiled to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul live such good life among the pagans and that though they had accused you of doing wrong that they may see your good deeds and glorify god but on the day he visits us submit yourself to the lord to the lord's sake to every human authority rather to let the imperial or the supreme authority, or is it the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and command those to do right? For it is God's will to be doing good that you shall silence and be ignorant, talk or a foolish people. Live as a free people, but do not use the freedom to cover up the evil. Life is good. This is life as God's slave. Show proper respect to everyone that love the family and believers, but fear of God and honor of an imperial. You know, people might think, you know, the slavery of the world, it's, it's evil. It's demonic. Um, coming out of the slavery and when it says slavery into God and all he asks is the Ten Commandments. You know, it's stuff that in general we should be doing, and yet we act like he's asking for too much. And that's it. And he's saying you're free. You're free, but don't live in the demonic world. You're around pagans, but don't act like them. Don't live like them. Don't sin like them. They have made their bed, and they want to lay on it. It doesn't mean that you have to live that way. That's a pathway to help. He, that's coming to an end, and it's going to perish in a lake of fire. Slaves in, in reverent fear of God, submit yourself to your master, not only to those who are good, but considerate, but those who have are harsh, that it is commendable in someone bears up under the pain for unjust suffering because they're a conscience of God. But this is, 
but how is it to your credit that you receive a beating for doing wrong? Endure it, but if you suffer, you'll be doing good. But if you endure it, it will be commendable before God. This is what is called because Christ suffered for the living for your example that he shall follow in his steps. Now, what does that mean? It means that since we're living right, right, and we're learning the Bible, we had to learn the Bible, and we're preaching deliverance to you, and we're being kicked down, we're being prosecuted, we're being spit at, we're being called everything except a child of the Most High God, everything in the book, but except a child of the Most High God. But he's saying, take that. That's us being the sacrifice for you, so you could hear the truth, and we could preach deliverance and liberty to you, and you're not in bondage with Satan. However, you do come with Father, and people might say, oh, well, slavery is slavery. No. If it's if that's what you call slavery, living by the Ten Commandments and being told what to do, or if you're out there in, in Satan's world that you have to sell yourself, you have to do what they say, you know, and if you sell yourself, because I know that, and that, that happened, that's out there. Then if you do the will of their way, then of course they're going to sit there and offer you probably housing if you're lucky or sell yourself, but you're, you're not going to be making nothing because you're slavery to them. When you're a slavery, like our ancestors, it showed you the beginning when they brought them out of Egypt, that they were crying that they wanted to go back, but they were getting beat, they were getting raped, they were getting killed, they were opening women's and taking out their babies out of their stomach. I mean, it was evil evil world. That's the kind of world that is in this world right now. And that is what he's freeing you from. And he's asking the Ten Commandments to live by the Ten Commandments. If you call that slavery bad, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You know, and I'm not saying that you do, but some were like, you know, well, geez, I think I heard somebody on the Star, uh, Star Channel that was like, well, they want us to live by this Ten Commandments. You know, well, if we're in slavery, selling ourselves, you know, in prostitution, then, you know, they, they will reward us. Are they really, is that a reward? Do you have to sit there and sell yourself? You have to sell your children? You have to sell your husband? Because that's what the world was about. That's why you hear sex trafficking everywhere. You hear how many t children are sexually, sexually abused and physically abused from parents that they had step parents or stepmom, stepdad that did the unimaginable to them. And they are tarnished. That's the healing that he's bringing to this world that he brought to me from what I went through at 11 years old and up. It says, he committed no sin and no deceit and was found in his mouth. But when they hurled their insults at him, that he did not, he did not retaliate. But he suffered that he was made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who justice justly. He himself bore our sins in his body and on the cross so that we may die, so that we may die to sin and live for righteous. By his wounds, we have been healed. For if you were like the sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He's bringing you. We have lost our souls. I was walking around without a soul, and I didn't even know until I had to walk through the valley of shadow of death, but I fear no evil because he was with me. You know, I've seen a lot of people that souls was in hell, and they're up here. You know, I was like, wait a minute. Whoa. You know, and this is to bring it back to you. That's why you go from dry bones to prophesy to your bones that your bones live. You go from being asleep to coming back to life. And it's in there. It's in the Bible. I'm telling you, you will feel the difference. I felt the difference. You know? 1 Peter 3. Wives the same way submit yourselves to the way of your own husband, so that if any of them do not believe the word, that they may be won over with that words by the behavior of your wives, of their wives that they see the purity and the reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward ab abundance, but such in elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry, fine clothing, but rather that it should be with your inner self on fading beauty of the gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. 
for this is the way holy women of past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves that they submitted themselves to their own husband, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham, 